Okay. All right. So I was reading this section from Chaitanya Charitamrit, the talks between Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Rai. So in preparation uh, for the Radha Ashtami that is coming up next week, I wanted to discuss few thoughts. So there is this conversation happening between Ramananda Rai, who is a Vishakha Sakhi in Krishna Leela. She is the, uh, one of the eight principal gopis of Srimati Radha Rani. And um, Ramananda Rai is also incarnation of Arjuna. Um, so one devotee was saying that in Kurukshetra battle, Arjuna was asking questions and Krishna was answering. But in Chaitanya Leela, uh, the roles are reversed. We see in this pastime, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is asking questions and Ramananda Rai is uh, giving answers. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asks this question to Ramananda Rai, what is the ultimate goal of life? And uh, Ramananda Rai, he gives various answers. Um, he quotes Bhagavad Gita saying, Yad Karoshi, Yad Ashnasi, Yad Jehosi, Dadasi, Yad that verse. Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you give away um, in charity and whatever austerities you perform, do that as, uh, as an offering to me. But uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he rejects this, saying, Eho bahya aage kaha ar. This is external. You better tell me something other, something else. So then he quotes, Sarva dharman paritajya maam ekam sharanam vraj aham tvam sarva pape bhe moksha shunimasa cha. Like that, he's quoting further Bhagavad Gita verses, Brahma bhuta prasanatma nasho chitina kangshiti. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he rejects them, saying, Eho bahya aage kaha ar. Go ahead and say something more. So like that, the conversation goes on. But then there are a few verses that uh, Ramananda Rai says. Like he says this verse uh, from Canto 10, Chapter 14. Um, namant eva jivanti sanmukritam that uh, this verse that Brahma says that you can conquer the Lord who is unconquerable by staying where you are in whichever uh, position you are, in whichever ashram you are, but hearing about the glories of the Lord. So to that uh, response, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Eho hai, aage kaha hai. This is all right, but you can speak more on this subject. And then he quotes, Krishna bhakti rasa bhavita mati kriyatam yadi kutopi labhita. Like you should have intense greed to um, increase your devotional service. And that's, that's the price that you can pay to attain Krishna. So to that verse also, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Eho hai, aage kaha hai. This is all right, but you, you should tell me something more. So then, Ultimately, Ramananda Rai, he describes the service to Krishna in the different rasas, uh, in the mood of friendship, he says is the highest. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, no, go one step higher. And he describes the love for Krishna in Vatsalya Ras. And uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, go one step higher. And uh, then he describes a spontaneous love for Krishna in the mood of the gopis. Uh, Ramananda Rai says is the highest perfection. And that love uh, that Radha Rani has for Krishna is the highest. And that uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, Mahaprabhu accepted that. Accepted that. Um, so that was the conclusion of this talk. That um, uh, spontaneous love for Krishna in the mood of the gopis is the highest perfection of life. So I'll read one uh, verse in this section. Sakhi vinaye lilaya. Anyera nahi gati, sakhi bhave ye tanre, kare anugati, radha krishna kunja seva, sadhya se paye, se sadhya paite ar nahi ka upaye. Translation Without the help of the gopis, one cannot enter into these pastimes, these pastimes of radha and krishna. Only one who worships the Lord in the ecstasy of the gopis, following in their footsteps, can engage in the service of Sri Sri Radha Krishna in the bushes of Vrindavan. Only then can one understand the conjugal love between Radha and Krishna. There is no other procedure for understanding. Purport. The means for returning home, for going back to Godhead, is devotional service. But everyone has a different taste in the Lord's service. One may be inclined to serve the Lord in servitude, Dasiras, fraternity, Sakhiras, or paternal love, Vatsaliras, but none of these can enable one to enter into the service of the Lord in conjugal love. To attain such service, one has to follow in the footsteps of the gopis in the ecstasy of Sakhi Bhav. Then only one can one understand the transcendental mellow of conjugal love. In the Ujwal Nilmani, Srila Rupa Goswami advises, Prema Leela Viharanam. Samyag Vistarika Sakhi 
Vishrambha Ratna Peti Cha, one who ex expands the conjugal love of Krishna and his enjoyment among the gopis is called a Sakhi. Such a person is a confidential gopi in the con conjugal affairs. Such assistants are like jewels in the form of Krishna's confidence. The actual business of Sakhis is described in the Ujjwal Nilmani. In the conjugal pastimes of Krishna, Krishna is the hero, Naika, and Radhika is the heroine, Naika, Nayak and Naika. The first business of the gopis is to chant the glories of both the hero and the heroine. Their second business is to gradually create a situation in which the hero may be attracted to the heroine and vice versa. Their third business is to induce both of them to approach each other. Their fourth business is to surrender onto Krishna. The fifth is to create a jovial atmosphere. The sixth is to give them assurance to enjoy their pastimes. The seventh to dress and decorate both hero and heroine. The eighth to show expertise in expressing their desires. The ninth is to conceal the faults of the heroine. The tenth to cheat their respective husbands and relatives. The eleventh to educate. The twelfth to enable both the hero and heroine to meet at the proper time. Thirteenth to fan the hero and heroine. Fourteenth to sometimes reproach the hero and heroine. And fifteenth to give conversation to set conversations in motion and the 16th to protect the heroine by various means. Some materialistic sahajyas who cannot actually understand the pastimes of Radha and Krishna manufacture their own lifestyles without referring to authority. Such sahajyas are called Sakhi Beki and sometimes they are called Gora Nagari. They believe that the material body which is fit to be eaten by jackals and dogs is enjoyable for Krishna. Consequently, they artificially decorate the material body to attract Krishna, thinking themselves Sakhis. But Krishna is never attracted by the artificial grooming of the material body. As far as Srimati Radharani and her gopis are concerned, their bodies, homes, dresses, ornaments, endeavors, and activities are all spiritual. All of these are meant to satisfy the spiritual senses of Krishna. Indeed, they are so pleasing and endearing to Krishna that he is subjugated by the influence of Srimati Radharani and her friends. They have nothing to do with anything mundane within the 14 planetary systems of the universe. Although Krishna is attractive to everyone, he is nonetheless attracted by the gopis and Srimati Radharani. One should not be misled by mental concoctions supporting his material body to be perfect and deeming oneself a Sakhi. This is something like a uh -huh, Graho Pashna, that is Mayavadi worship of his own body as the Supreme. Srila Jiva Goswami has cautioned mundaners to abstain from such conceptions. He also warns that thinking oneself one of the associates of the Supreme without following in the footsteps of the gopis is an offense is as offensive as thinking oneself the Supreme. Such thinking is an aparad. One has to practice living in Vrindavan by hearing about the talks of the gopis with Krishna. However, one should not consider himself a gopi, for this is offensive. So, uh, like Prabhupada is saying in the purport that um, each one of us have a swarup, uh, a position in the spiritual world. It could be in the Dasiras, Sakiras, Vatsaliras, or Madhuraras. And um, when we attain that position, we are fully satisfied. Like a Gopa friend of Krishna, playing with Krishna, he's fully satisfied in that rasa. He won't think that, oh, I wish I was a gopi. But uh, in terms of rasa, the pleasure um, these interactions provide to Krishna, there is an order. Uh, there, one rasa is higher than the other. There is shantras, higher than shantras is dasiras, higher than that is sakiras, higher than that is vatsaliras, and highest is madhuriras. Uh, one of the other verses that um, Ramananda Rai quotes, uh, in this conversation, he says that it is true that whatever relationship a particular devotee has with the Lord is the best for him. Still, when we study all the different methods from a neutral position, we can understand that there is something is higher and there are higher and lower degrees of love. So the highest perfection, uh, as is stated in this verse that we read today, is participating in the conjugal pastimes of Radha and Krishna as a gopi and um, 
that's the highest perfection and the purport lists uh, various activities that the gopis are performing um, they are engaged in and the gopis are considered as the topmost pure devotees uh, of the lord uh, because they have no lust there is only prem atma indriya priti vancha tare bhali kam krishna indriya priti icha tare prem nam they only want to please the senses of krishna they only desire is to um, serve radha and krishna now um, some people as a prabhupada is saying some people externally take the form of a gopi and they decorate themselves and they dance and they think themselves as sakhis but such people are called sahajiyas means the ones who take things cheaply so now chaitanya mahaprabhu who is um, radha and krishna combined and his um, close associates who came with him in the chaitanya leela they are all gopis most of them are gopis and manjaris they came to show us how to attain this highest perfection how to participate in the conjugal loving pastimes of radha and krishna and what it means to follow in the footsteps of the gopis that we will discuss today so um it's mentioned that in chaitanya charitamrit that radha krishna ek atma dui deha dhari anyone vilase ras uh, aswadan kari that radha and krishna are one and the same but they have assumed two bodies thus they enjoy each other tasting the mellows of love so krishna he is the supreme purusha he is the supreme enjoyer and when krishna he wants to enjoy supreme bliss he needs someone who is supremely enjoyable and therefore krishna he expands himself as his own ladani shakti um, or the pleasure potency and that's shrimati radharani and the function of this pleasure potency is to give krishna unlimited pleasure and just like krishna he expands himself into shrimati radharani shrimati radharani expands herself into um lakshmi's uh, queens of dwarka the gopis of vrindavan like that to increase the rasa in the past times with krishna so it is uh, said that radharani because of her selfless love she experiences millions of times more pleasure than what krishna experiences and so therefore lord shri krishna in order to understand the nature of shri mati radharani's mahabhav in order to understand um what uh, in him attracts shri mati radharani and what is the um to in order to taste a drop of the unlimited ocean of sweetness radharani is feeling krishna he appears as chaitanya mahaprabhu so chaitanya mahaprabhu is krishna himself in the mood and complexion of shri mati radharani the example is given just like a uh, a flower cannot understand its own sweetness but the bee who sucks the nectar of the flower understands it so shri krishna came as chaitanya mahaprabhu in the mood of radharani to taste his own nectar and we have um, some verses uh, that provides us this internal reason of chaitanya mahaprabhu's appearance shri radha pranaya mahima ki drishyo vani eva स्वाद्यो ये नादपुता मधुरिमा की दृश्यो वा मदीया सौख्यम चास्य मद अनुभवतः की दृश्यं वेति लोभा तद भावाद्या समग्नी सचि गर्भा सिंधु हरिंदु सो दिस इज द इंटरनल रीजन फॉर चेतन महाप्रभुज अपीयरेंस डिजायरिंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द ग्लोरी ऑफ राधा रानीज लव द वंडरफुल क्वालिटीज इन हिम दैट शी अलोन रिलिशेस थ्रू हर लव and the happiness she feels when she realizes the sweetness of his love the supreme lord hari richly endowed with her emotions appeared from the womb of shrimati sachi devi as the moon appeared from the ocean and um, there's another verse that says that um, um earlier radha and krishna they were separated but they have again united as chaitanya mahaprabhu that's radha krishna pranay vikriti ladini shakti snan so chaitanya mahaprabhu came to bestow upon us what no incarnation has ever offered before this sublime and radiant mellow of conjugal love chaitanya mahaprabhu came to give us the hari krishna mantra so chaitanya mahaprabhu mentioned in chaitanya charitamrit tar madhye sarva shreshth hari naam sankirtan nir apradhe naam le paaye prem dhan so chaitanya mahaprabhu's hari naam sankirtan movement is actually signifying the eternal past times of radha and krishna in the spiritual world 
the Rasa Leela of Radha and Krishna. And when we chant the Hare Krishna mantra, it is like we are participating in the Ras Leela with Radha and Krishna. Narottam Das Thakur says, Golo Kera Prem Dhan Hari Nam Sankirtan. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has brought these eternal pastimes of Radha and Krishna from the spiritual world of Golak Vrindavan to this world. And he invites us to participate in these pastimes of uh, Radha and Krishna by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. So in the Chaitanya uh, Mahaprabhu's pastimes, um, along with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came his several associates who are gopis, the sakhis of Radharani and manjaris uh, who are um, little girls who uh, assist the sakhis. Uh, and these um, associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu facilitated these pastimes in Chaitanya, Mahapra- uh, Chaitanya Charthamrit and also showed us how to attain the service of Radha and Krishna in Madhuri Ras. So we have gopis and then we have manjaris. So these manjaris, these are small girls who assist gopis in serving Srimati Radharani. And the leader of the manjaris is Sri Rupa Manjari. And it is um, said that when Radharani and Krishna, they are meeting secretly in private, the sakhis, uh, Lalita, Vishakha, Tugma Vidya and the other gopis, they do not like to approach um, and disturb uh, Radha and Krishna but the younger girls the manjaris can easily enter and these manjaris they have a they have a special advantage because they can provide the most intimate type of uh, service to Radha and Krishna and Prabhupada writes in um, teachings of uh, Lord Chaitanya he says that um, manjaris they have no desire to mix with Krishna or enjoy him personally rather they are always ready to help Radha Rani associate with Krishna and their affection for Krishna and Radharani is so pure that they are simply satisfied to see Radha and Krishna, that they are together, that they are united. So all the servants of Radharani, these gopis and manjaris, um, they are actually direct expansions of Srimati Radharani, that I mentioned before. And of all the manjaris, there are three main manjaris. We have um, Ananga Manjari, who is Srimati Radharani's younger sister, um, she is the expansion of Balramji. And we have Lavanga Manjari, who is in Gaur Leela, came as Sri Sanatan Goswami. And the chief of all the Manjaris, the most confidential and the prominent Manjari is Sri Rupa Manjari, who came in Gaur Leela as Sri Rupa Goswami. So all the Manjaris are under the love and care and direction of Sri Rupa Manjari. So in our Sampradaya, most of our Acharyas are Manjaris in the spiritual world. Uh, Rupa Manjari's principal assistant is Kamal Manjari, who is Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Um, we have Bak- uh, Nayan Manjari, who is Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. We have Raghunath Das Goswami, who is Rati Manjari. And we have uh, Narottam Das Thakur, Srinivas Acharyas, the six Goswamis, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, Baladev Vidya Bhushan. All these are Manjaris in the spiritual world, made servants of Srimati Radha Rani. So this Manjari Bhav is to become dasa, dasa, and das, the servant of the servant of Radha and Krishna. So in the in the morning during the Mangal Arti, we we sing this verse: Nikunja yo no rati keli siddhe ya ya libhi yukte apikshani ya tatra di daksha dati valabhasya vande guru shri chare naravindam. So this verse says that the spiritual master is very dear because he is expert in assisting the gopis who at different times make different tasteful arrangements for the perfection of Radha and Krishna's conjugal loving affairs in the groves of Vrindavan. So uh, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur has written this song, uh, Guru Vashtakam, and, uh, and, uh, which is a prayer to the spiritual master. And he's saying that the spiritual master is in the Manjari Bhav. So it is clear that in our Gaudiya Sampradaya, um, our most worshipable deity is Srimati Radharani. And our only aim is to assist the maidservants of Srimati Radharani in her pastimes with Sri Krishna. We have this um, song by Narottam Das Thakur. 
राधा कृष्ण प्राण मोरा जुगल किशोर जीवन मराने गति और नहीं मोर राधा कृष्ण प्राण मोरा जुगल किशोर कालिंदीर कुले के लिए कदम बे रवाना रतन बिदीरा ऊपर उषा बोध जाना श्यामा गौरी अंगे दीपो चंदन निरागंधा चमारा दुला बो कदे हेरी मुख चंद्रा राधा कृष्ण प्राण मोरा जुगल किशोर सो नरोत्तम दास ठाकुर इज सेइंग दैट द डिवाइन कपल श्री श्री राधा एंड कृष्ण आर माय लाइफ एंड सोल इन लाइफ एंड डेथ I have no other refuge but them. In the forest of small kadamba trees on the bank of Yamuna, I will seat the divine couple on a throne made of brilliant jewels. I will anoint their dark and fair forms with sandalwood paste, scented with chuya, and I will fan them with a chamara whisk. Oh, when will I behold their moon-like faces? And after stringing together garlands of malati flowers, I will place them around their necks, and I will offer tambula. Scented with camphor to their lotus mouth, and with the permission of all the sakhis headed by Lalita and Vishaka, I will serve the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. Narottam Das, a servant of the servant, Das a Das and a Das. Shri of Shri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu longs for this service to the divine couple. So we can see Narottam Das Thakur is in the mood of the manjari, um, and uh, he is serving Radha and Krishna. um and he's um, serving under the the main principal sakhis lalita and vishakha so um service to shrimati radha rani like that is prominent in our sampradaya so those who uh, worship vishnu are called vaishnavas those who worship krishna are called karshniyas and those who worship gauri shrimati radha rani are called gaudias and we are gaudia Vaishnavas, and Prabhupad quotes that. Um, uh, so yeah, this uh, Rupa Manjari, she is the main Manjari under whom we all serve eternally, and therefore we are called Rupa Nugas in our sampradaya. Rupa Manjari is very dear to Radha Rani, and uh, Radha Rani, um, she uh, she does not even light the fire in the kitchen to cook for. Krishna without Rupa Manjari. So it's mentioned that um, every morning, uh, Shri Mati Radha Rani uh, is invited by Yashoda Mai to Nanda Bhavan to cook breakfast for Krishna. And uh, Yashoda Mai, um, she has heard that uh, Durvasa Muni has given a blessing to Shri Mati Radha Rani that whatever she cooks uh, will be nectar, and whatever and whoever eats. anything cooked by her will have a long life and demons will not be able to defeat that person so yashoda mai she begged kirti dasundari who is the mother of shrimati radha rani to to allow her to come and cook the first meal of the day for krishna so that he'll be protected for that day so every morning shrimati radha rani along with the eight principal gopis and the eight principal manjaris they all go together from barsana uh, to nandagaon to assist shrimati radha rani and rupa manjari uh, she lights the fire in the kitchen and krishna happily eats what radha rani cooks and he goes out to graze the cows in the forest and then it's mentioned that in the afternoon radha rani she goes to the surya kund on the pretext of doing surya puja and there krishna he comes secretly to meet shrimati radha rani and later in the day um they meet at radha kund and wonderful pastimes happen over there and in the evening when krishna is coming back from the forest uh, he passes from the front of the house of shrimati radha rani and their eyes meet um and at night every night um uh, radha and krishna they are having this ras leela so krishna he is enjoying uh, in golok vrindavan with radha rani and the gopis and uh, we have seen previously several past times krishna is enjoying with his friends enjoying with the cows with his parents and all the vrajvasis and um, shrimati radha rani is enjoying cutting jokes with her friends and um, like that so there is this eternal ashtakaliya leela that is going on in the spiritual world 
and uh, I was reading Govind the Lila Amrit by Krishnadas Kavi Raj Goswami, and uh, we'll discuss uh, it in next class. Uh, so this is the daily eightfold pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So spiritual world, as we hear, is the most wonderful and most beautiful uh, place. And that's where we have to go, and we have to aspire to become the maid servant of Shrimati Radharani. It is said that without taking shelter of Sri Rupa Goswami, one cannot enter into the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And without taking shelter of Rupa Manjari, one cannot enter into the confidential pastimes of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. So since we cannot approach Srimati Radha Rani without going through Rupa Manjari, who is actually Rupa Goswami in his Sadhak Deya, we should understand the mood and the qualities of Rupa Goswami so we can follow in his footsteps and get his mercy. So that's what it means to follow in the footsteps of the gopis. To see that these gopis incarnated in Chaitanya Leela as these um, uh, confidential associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, we need to see their mood and uh, what they did. And we can follow in their footsteps. And um, that's how we can uh, attain uh, the service of Srimati Radha Rani by getting their mercy. So in Nectar of Instruction, Srila Prabhupada writes that uh, this Krishna consciousness movement is being conducted under the supervision of Sri Rupa Goswami. And we all should aspire to become Rupa Nugas, uh, following the footsteps of Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami is our Sampradaya Acharya. And we are all servants of Rupa Goswami. He is also the Abhide Acharya, uh, the Acharya who gives us the process of uh, devotional service. Uh, and Rupa Goswami has given us many books. Uh, Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu and Upadesha Amrita. These are the primary books that we study. And um, Rupa Goswami has given us the definition of pure devotional service. Anya abhilashita shunyam jnana karmadi navritam anukulena krishna anushilanam bhaktir uttama. That one should render service to, the, uh, to Lord Krishna uh, in an anukul way, uh, favorably, for the pleasure of Krishna. And Anushilanam, uh, continuous, without break, and jnana karmadi anavritam, without any desire for material profit or any gain. So that's um, that's ahetuki bhakti, ahetuki pratihata, the pure devotional service. So that's uh, Rupa Goswami is our Abhide Acharya, and then uh, Sanatan Goswami is our Sambandh Acharya. Uh, who gave us, um, who informs us about our relationship with Radha and Krishna. And Raghunath Das Goswami is our Prayojan Acharya, who tells us about our end goal, which is to attain Krishna Prem. So I would like to discuss a, a pastime of Rupa Goswami from Chaitanya Charitamrit today, so we can see uh, what's his mood and how we can follow in his, his footsteps. So just a brief history of uh, Rupa Goswami for those who are not aware. Um, Rupa and Sanatan Goswami, uh, they are brothers. They were uh, from a Saraswat Brahman family and um, in Karnataka. And uh, their original names were Amar and Santosh. They also had a brother, Anupam. So they were very loving and gentle and kind Vaishnavas. And they were deeply learned in the scriptures and everybody loved them. And um, the king of Bengal, who was Nawab Hussain Shah, he was a Muslim and he wanted the support of uh, Hindu community and therefore he somehow or other induced um, Rupa and Sanatan who are Amar and Santosh to become his ministers and he threatened them actually that if you don't join me then I will attack um, these pious Brahmanas. So basically they were blackmailed into becoming ministers for Nawab Hussain Shah and their names became Dabir Khas and Sakar Malik. So Nawab Hussain Shah he gave uh, royal uh, facilities to these two brothers. Uh, it is said that uh, their opulence was similar to that of Indra. Um, but they were not attracted to any of these opulences. Instead, they, were, they used their wealth to create uh, replicas of Vrindavan, Gupta Vrindavan in their palaces, hidden Vrindavan. And they used to meditate on Krishna's pastimes. So this Rupa and Sanatan Goswami is Amar and Santosh. They wanted to um, escape this government service and join Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So they wrote many letters to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, but for a long time, they did not get any reply from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Finally, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave them 
uh, one uh, reply in, in one letter he gave them the reply in one line chaitanya mahaprabhu wrote in that letter if a woman is attached to a man other than her husband she will appear very busy in carrying out her household affairs but within her heart she is always relishing feeling of association with her paramour so from this response uh rupan sinha think goes for me they understood uh, what chaitanya mahaprabhu was trying to tell them that they need to perform their duties very nicely and at the same time keep meditating on krishna but their heart was hankering to be with chaitanya mahaprabhu and when will they leave this government service and join chaitanya mahaprabhu full time so one time lord chaitanya mahaprabhu he was traveling to vrindavan and he took a detour and he went to ramakeli where rupa and sanatan goswami were living and uh, rupa and sanatan goswami they met they, met, they went to meet chaitanya mahaprabhu and first of all they approached um, lord nityananda prabhu and haridas thakur um, oh, associates of chaitanya mahaprabhu and they said that you are great devotees of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu please introduce us to the lord we are unqualified to go directly in front of the lord so then haridas thakur and nityananda prabhu they brought um, rupa and sanatan into the presence of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and uh, in a spirit of humility they took straw in their mouth and we were hearing yesterday about the humility of uh, uh, rupa and sanatan goswami and uh, so they they took straw in their mouth and they offered prostrated obeisances full dandavat pranam to chaitanya mahaprabhu and out of humility they were not even getting up lord chaitanya mahaprabhu had to lift them up and with folded palms they offered heartfelt prayers to lord chaitanya mahaprabhu they said that we belong to the lowest class of men our associates and our, our employment is of lowest type Uh, we cannot even introduce ourselves to you we are very ashamed um, lord you have incarnated to deliver all fallen souls uh, but please consider that in this world there is no one so fallen as us we are more most fallen we are more fallen than jagai and madai so like that they were saying this to chaitanya mahaprabhu and they pray to chaitanya mahaprabhu to accept them and give them his mercy uh, so we see here that rupan sanatan goswami they are highly qualified people and they are offering intense prayers of humility and chaitanya mahaprabhu's heart was touched to see their humility and chaitanya mahaprabhu he gave them initiation uh, right there and he changed their names so chaitanya mahaprabhu said aji hoyte duhara naam rupa sanatan denye chhade tumhare denye pati mora man so chaitanya mahaprabhu is saying from this day your name is changed to shri rupa and shri sanatan now please abandon your humility for my heart is breaking to see you so humble so chaitanya mahaprabhu he tells us uh, to be humble he, he said he gave us this verse the nada pi suni chana darur vas sahishnu na mani na mane dena kirtaniya sadahari to be more humble than the blade of grass more tolerant than a tree but chaitanya mahaprabhu is telling rupa and sanatan goswami please give up your humility it's breaking my heart so we can see um um the mood of uh, rupan sanatan goswami they're very humble and think themselves um uh, very insignificant so so then chaitanya mahaprabhu um, gave them initiation and uh, after attaining chaitanya mahaprabhu's mercy rupan sanatan goswami they were able to leave the government service escape um from uh, their service to nawab husain shah and engage in chaitanya mahaprabhu's service full time so i would like to read one uh, past time of uh, rupa goswami from antalila so i will read few verses generally shri chaitanya mahaprabhu recited a verse while dancing and chanting before the rath but no one knew why he was reciting that particular verse so shri chaitanya mahaprabhu he is krishna in the mood of radha rani and radha rani is always remembering krishna and want to be with krishna so lord chaitanya mahaprabhu he in this rath yatra he is looking at lord jagannath in that mood um of shrimati radha rani that oh krishna when will you come back to vrindavan and this pulling of rath of jagannath signifies how devotees they want to um have krishna come back to vrindavan so chaitanya mahaprabhu is singing a a, a particular verse 
Only Swarup Damodar Goswami knew the purpose for which the Lord recited that verse. According to Lord's attitude, he used to quote other verses to enable the Lord to relish mothers. Rupa Goswami, however, could understand the intention of the Lord, and thus he composed another verse that appealed to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this verse that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was reciting uh, in the mood of uh, Radha Rani, um, uh, nobody could understand what was the meaning of this verse. Everybody was bewildered, uh, except for Swarup Damodar, who is Lalita Sakhi in, uh, in the Krishna Leela and Rupa Goswami. So here it says that Rupa Goswami could understand the intention of the Lord. And this is the verse that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was reciting. That very personality who stole my heart during my youth is now again my master. These are the same moonlit nights of the month of Chaitra. The same fragrance of Malati flowers is there. And the same sweet breezes are blowing from the Kadamba forest. In our intimate relationship, I am also the same lover. Yet still my mind is not happy here. I am eager to go back to that place on the bank of the Reva under the Vedasi tree. This is my de desire. So this is the verse that uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was speaking. And then Rupa Goswami, understanding the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he composed um, another verse which completely echoes what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's verse was speaking about. And um, uh, so here, this is the verse that Rupa Goswami wrote. My dear friend, now I have met my very old and dear friend Krishna on this field of Kurukshetra. I am the same Radharani and now we are meeting together. It is very pleasant, but I would still like to go to the bank of Yamuna Beneath the trees of the forest there, I wish to hear the vibration of his sweet flute playing the fifth note within the forest of Vrindavan. So this is the verse that Rupa Goswami wrote and he wrote this verse and put it on a palm leaf. After writing this verse on a palm leaf, Rupa Goswami put it somewhere in the thatched roof and went to bathe in the sea. At that time, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went there to meet him and when he saw the leaf pushed into the roof, and saw the verse, he began to read it. After reading the verse, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was overwhelmed by ecstatic love. At that very time, Rupa Goswami returned, having finished bathing in the sea. And seeing the Lord, Sri Rupa Goswami fell flat in the courtyard to offer obeisances. The Lord slapped him mildly in love and spoke as follows. My heart is very confidential. How did you know my mind in this way? After saying this, he firmly embraced Rupa Goswami. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was ecstatic to see how Rupa Goswami knows my heart. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took that verse and showed it to Swarup Damodar for him to examine. Then the Lord questioned him. How could Rupa Goswami have understood my heart? The Lord asked. So that, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is asking Swarup Damodar, how is that that uh, Rupa Goswami knows my heart? And um, so this pastime is actually repeated in Madhya Leela and in one of the purports in Madhya Leela, I would like to mention that uh, Prabhupada, he mentions in the purport this uh, particular incident. We had the opportunity to receive a similar blessing from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami when we presented an essay at his birthday ceremony. He was so pleased with that essay that he used to call some of his confidential devotees and show it to them. How could we have understood the intentions of Srila Prabhupada? So Srila Prabhupada, he wrote a poem glorifying his Guru Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur uh, at his birthday ceremony. And one of the famous verses were, Absolute is sentient, thou has proved impersonal calamity, thou has removed. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was so happy uh, to read this uh, poem by uh, Abhay Charan, was Srila Prabhupada. Uh, and he was saying, how does Abhay Charan, he know my heart and uh, whatever uh, he publishes, whatever he writes, you should publish it. Uh, so like that, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur told his associates and he was showing everyone, oh, look what Abhay Charan has written. And so everybody was saying that this is similar to what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Rupa Goswami. How does Rupa Goswami know my heart? So, so back to the pastime. Um, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, no one could otherwise understand this meaning. 
uh, actually this is Swarup Damodar Singh. No one could un otherwise understand this meaning. I can therefore guess that previously you bestowed upon him your causeless mercy. So, and then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, Rupa Goswami met me at Prayag, knowing him to be a suitable person, I naturally bestowed my mercy upon him. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is really revealing the secret um, that, yes, I have bestowed my mercy upon him and that's why he knows my heart. So he's mentioning about this meeting in Prayag. So we'll see what happened in Prayag um, and how Rupa Goswami got the mercy of uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we'll go to uh, this another section here. So when Rupa, uh, Rupa Goswami, um, he escaped from Nawab Hussain Shah, he and his brother Anupam, they first went to Prayag to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Rupa Goswami, when he saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he spontaneously chanted two verses, uh, which are considered as the best glorification of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I will read. Uh, so these are the two verses that um, Rupa Goswami chanted for seeing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Prayag. And this is a very famous verse we all know. Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaurat Vishena Maha O most munificent incarnation, you are Krishna himself, appearing as Shri Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You have assumed the golden color of Srimati Radharani, and you are widely distributing pure love of Krishna. We offer our respectful obeisances to, unto you. So that was one verse, and the other verse was this. Yo yanana, yo agyanamatam bhuvanam dayalur ulaghaya nan. Ape Akarut Pramatam Swaprem Sampat Sudhaya Adbutaham Shri Krishna Chaitanyam Amum Prapadye. We offer our respectful obeisances unto the most merciful Supreme Personality of Godhead who has converted all the three worlds which were maddened by ignorance and saved them from their diseased condition by making them mad with the nectar from the treasure house of love of God. Let us take full shelter of that personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, whose activities are wonderful. So here uh, Rupa Goswami is saying that in this world, people are mad because of ignorance. Um, but you, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you are so compassionate, you are so merciful that you are making these mad people more mad by giving them your own love. You are that Krishna Chaitanya and I, I take full shelter of you. So these are the examples of uh, exquisite poetry and uh, this personality, Rupa Goswami. Uh, he's so talented and so gifted. Uh, he was a great diplomat, a minister, finance minister, and he knew so many languages. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was, he was not pleased um, by these external um, characteristics, but he was pleased by the genuine humility of uh, uh, Rupa Goswami. And then further um, in this um, in this place of Prayag, um, it's mentioned that in Prayag, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, once uh, was talking with a devotee named Vallabh Bhatt. Um, and um, um, so Vallabh Bhatt, he saw that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's heart was being melted in joy seeing Rupa Goswami and Anupam. And um, Vallabh Bhatt, he was attracted um, and he wanted to embrace uh, Rupa Goswami and uh, his brother Anupam. And let's see what happened at that time. So we'll read a few verses there. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu selected his residence beside the confluence of Ganges and the Yamuna, a place called Triveni. The two brothers, Rupa, and, Rupa Goswami and Sri Vallabh, who is Anupam, selected their residence near the Lords. At that time, Sri Vallabh Bhatt was staying at Adail Gram. And when he heard that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had arrived, he went to his place to see him. So Sri Vallabh Bhatt went to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Vallabh Bhattacharya offered Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu his obeisances and the Lord embraced him. After that, they discussed topics about Krishna for some time. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu felt great ecstatic love when they began discussing Krishna. But the Lord checked his feelings because he felt shy before Vallabh Bhatt. 
although the lord restrained himself externally ecstatic love raged within there was no checking that vallabh bhat was astonished to detect this therefore vallabh bhat invited shri chaitanya mahaprabhu for lunch and the lord instructed the brothers rupa and vallabh to uh, sorry the lord introduced the brothers rupa and vallabh to him from a distance the brothers rupa goswami and shri vallabh fell on the ground and offered obeisances to vallabh bhat with great humility when vallabh bhatacharya walked towards them they ran away to a more distant place rupa goswami said i am untouchable and most sinful please do not touch me so we see vallabh bhat he went to embrace both uh, the brothers rupa and anupam and this and um, well the brothers rupa and anupam they were seeing how vallabh bhat is discussing with chitanya mahaprabhu and they are so close associates um, vallabh bhat is coming and then he, they were seeing that vallabh bhat is coming to give them honor so much honor so they were running away and saying that oh no no we are very insignificant we are very fallen so now um, we know that rupa and sanatan goswami they were from this born in a saraswat family high class brahmin family but because they were serving the nawab husain shah yavana king they considered themselves low caste so they are saying oh no 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 please don't touch us we are unqualified so even when um, lord chaitanya mahaprabhu used to call rupa goswami to come and sit next to him rupa goswami would always sit at a low, lower position he would never sit at the same level as chaitanya mahaprabhu so this vallabh bhatacharya he was very much surprised uh, seeing the behavior of rupa goswami and um, anupam shri chaitanya mahaprabhu however was very pleased and he therefore spoke to him this description of rupa goswami so shri chaitanya mahaprabhu is saying ino na sparshita ino jati ati hi vedika yagnika tumi kulina pravin shri chaitanya mahaprabhu said do not touch him for he belongs to a very low caste you are a follower of vedic principles and are a well experienced performer of many sacrifices you also belong to the aristocracy so chaitanya mahaprabhu is telling vallabh bhat actually they are right they are saying that they are fallen actually they are fallen they are low caste you are you are a great vedic brahmana you are such a great fan please don't embrace them and that's what chaitanya mahaprabhu is saying then uh, hearing the holy name constantly vibrated by the two brothers vallabh bhatacharya could understand the hints of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu so we can see here that um, vallabh bhat he saw that these two uh, people these rupa goswami and uh, anupam they are very special souls because their tongue is constantly vibrating they are constantly chanting the hari krishna mantra hearing the holy name constantly vibrated so their tongue was constantly moving and uh, they were chanting the hari krishna mantra so he was thinking how can they be fallen lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and he was he, he could understand the hints of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu so lord chaitanya mahaprabhu he, he was thinking that he's trying to teach me something he's trying to give me a hint to educate me and enlighten me on something so so like that he was thinking he he understood that chaitanya mahaprabhu is indirectly saying that they are uh, so chaitanya mahaprabhu was saying that they are fallen actually he is trying to tell me that you should learn from them that they they don't um, that don't be in the mood that we will go to them and give them blessings they are more advanced than you but instead of directly telling me vallabh bhat is thinking instead of directly telling me chaitanya mahaprabhu is saying that oh vallabh bhat you are a great pandit you are so intelligent they are fallen don't go near them so but actually chaitanya mahaprabhu is saying that they are more advanced than you so that's what vallabh bhat he understood uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu was saying and vallabh bhat acharya said since these two are constantly chanting the holy name of krishna how can they be untouchable on the contrary they are most exalted he is saying that they are not fallen how can they be fallen they are very high class top class vaishnavas because their tongues are constantly vibrating the hari krishna mantra i was remembering one past time of shri uh, shila prabhupad bhakti charu swami maharaj mentions that in the in his book ocean of mercy i will read one paragraph and this is the time when um, shila prabhupad he 
is very sick and he's about to leave his body. Um, at this time, um, in this section, um, Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj is writing, Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj came and we sat him next to Shila Prabhupada's bed near his head. Pishima was sitting on the floor next to him. Pishima was Shila Prabhupada's sister. The Kirtan went on non-stop for over 12 hours. I lost track of all time and body he needs. I just stood by Shila Prabhupada's bed, holding the small silver lota, pouring water into his mouth as he opened it from time to time. So Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj, he was putting Ganga Jal in uh, Shila Prabhupada's mouth uh, from time to time. At one point when Shila Prabhupada opened his mouth and I was about to pour a few drops of water, Babaji Maharaj commented, and here you can see, and Bhakti Charis Swami Maharaj is putting water in the mouth. So Babaji Maharaj, he commented that he is still chanting. Though Prabhupada was not making any sound, I could see his tongue vibrating in rhythm. So we can see Prabhupada's tongue. He was, he was also constantly vibrating, chanting Hare Krishna Mantra, even at this stage uh, when he was hmm, very sick, almost unconscious. So we can see that uh, Srila Prabhupada, um, he exemplified this principle of Trinadapi Sunichina Taruri Vasavishnuna Amani Namani Tena Kirtanaya Sadahari. That's why he was able to constantly chant the holy name of Krishna. Um, and Rupa Goswami also uh, exemplified this principle. And that's why Vallabhat, he, he saw that Rupa Goswami, he was constantly vibrating Hare Krishna Mantra. His tongue was constantly moving. Um, then one place... Um, uh, Satswarup Das Goswami, he writes that about Prabhupada. Like Prabhupada's preaching, his chanting was constant. While talking in his room with professors in Toronto, Prabhupada silently chanted the Hare Krishna mantra in between their academic words. When Prabhupada encouraged his disciples to chant Hare Krishna while sitting with them during a prasadam feast, one of the devotees replied, Lord Swamiji, how can we chant and eat at the same time? And Prabhupada replied, chant in between bites. And um, in one lecture, Prabhupada says, if one can chant and hear Hare Krishna mantra and always remember Lord Krishna, then he is sure to become fearless at death, which may come at any moment. This is our prescription that chant Hare Krishna without any stop. And even death comes, death may come at any moment. But if at the time of death, Somehow or other, you can utter Krishna or remember Krishna. And as soon as you utter the name of Krishna, you remember Krishna's form, Krishna's pastimes, everything. So let us chant Hare Krishna Mantra 24 hours. There is no impediment. Nobody can check it. If you are determined, then that I shall always chant Hare Krishna Mantra, nobody can check it. And he also says that chanting Hare Krishna Mantra... Uh, should be continued without stoppage and this will protect the devotee from all accidental fall downs. So Prabhupada um, was showing us by his example of how to constantly chant Hare Krishna. So this was the incident that happened in Prayag uh, that we were uh, hearing. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was recalling in Jagannath Puri um, when he saw the palm uh, leaf with the, the verse that Rupa Goswami has mentioned, and he was mentioning to Swarup Damodar that I have given Rupa Goswami my blessing in Prayag. So this is the incident that happened in Prayag. Uh, Rupa Goswami knows the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and that's why um, we have this prayer that we say to uh, Rupa Gos Goswami at the beginning of her class. Every class, devotees recite this prayer. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadati Swapadantikam That Shri Rupa Goswami um, is the one who understood the innermost desires of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and fulfilled them. When will Shri, when will Shri Rupa Goswami Prabhupada who has established within this material world the mission to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya Give me shelter under his lotus feet. So in Prayag, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu established that Rupa Goswami is a very special devotee. And uh, Rupa Goswami, he, despite of uh, composing exquisite poetry, glorifying Lord, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he preferred to present himself very humble and insignificant. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was pleased with his humility and constant chanting of the holy name. And... Um, 
uh, in few verses this section yeah so it's mentioned in the same section here chaitanya mahaprabhu taught rupa goswami all the conclusions he had heard from ramananda rai and duly empowered him so that he could understand them so chaitanya mahaprabhu empowered uh, rupa goswami by entering the heart of rupa goswami shri chaitanya mahaprabhu empowered him to ascertain properly the conclusions of all truths he made him an experienced devotee whose decisions correctly agreed with the verdicts of the disciplic succession and he was personally empowered by shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and um, one um, purport prabhupad mentions that and then for 10 days in prayag um, rupa goswami was instructed by chaitanya mahaprabhu so prabhupad mentions in the purport that this is a confirmation of the statement krishna shakti vina nahi tara pravartan unless one is specifically empowered by the supreme personality of god it he cannot spread the krishna consciousness movement an empowered devotee sees and feels himself to be the lowest of men for he knows that whatever he does is due to the inspiration given by the lord in the heart so the uh, devotee knows that whatever i am doing that the power uh, for doing that is coming from the lord so that's why the devotee feels insignificant and uh, to be empowered by the supreme personality of godhead one has to qualify himself so what what is the qualification that we can have so that we can also be empowered by the lord this means that one must engage 24 hours daily in the loving devotional service of the lord the material position of a devotee does not matter because devotional service is not dependent on material considerations so engaging in devotional service 24 hours a day so like that <clears throat> and then uh, as soon as one is favored by the mercy of the spiritual master and the lord one is immediately given all the power necessary to write books and propagate the krishna consciousness movement so that's the qualification of empowerment that one should engage in devotional service 24 hours a day and uh, should have great eagerness samutkantha to serve and um, should consider himself the lowest among men uh, lowest so rupa goswami he was empowered by chaitanya mahaprabhu and chaitanya mahaprabhu gave um, asked him to go to vrindavan and execute the four missions that chaitanya mahaprabhu wanted to execute in vrindavan so we have this famous verse krishna bhakti krishna prem seva pravartan lukt teerth uddhar aur vairagya shikshan so these are the four missions that uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu told rupa goswami uh, to conduct in uh, vrindavan krishna bhakti krishna prem to teach people about uh, krishna prem write books uh, explaining the science of devotional service seva pravartan to establish temples for deity worship and uh, set the standards for deity worship and lukt teerth uddhar excavate lost places of pilgrimage and or vairagya shikshan to teach um, by personal um, example of what it means to um, be be in sanyas order of life vairagya so like that um, chatra mahaprabhu gave these missions to uh, rupa goswami and rupa goswami he went to vrindavan and we were hearing yesterday um, Um, Maharaj was talking about um, that uh, in, in the Sad Goswami Ashtakam. It's mentioned how um, these Goswamis they were in Vrindavan. Tyaktva Tuna Mashesh Mandalapati Shrenim Sada Tuchava Bhutva Din Ganesh Ko Karunya Ko Pin Kantha Shrito Gopi Bhavar Samrita Tilahari Kalol Magna Muhu Bande Rupa Sanatana Raghu Yugo Shri Jeeva Gopalako So these Goswamis, they Tyaktva Turnam Ashesha Mandalapati. So they, they gave up their exalted position as ministers and they became, um, they gave up the association of Mandalapati, the big politicians, big merchants, and they considered them Tuch. Uh, this is... useless uh, to be doing this uh, and then they were bhutva din ganeshiko they were they became mendicants and they accepted only one small loin cloth and one water pot 
and every night they were uh, sitting under a, a different tree and bhutva deen ganesha ko karuni and then they wanted to show mercy to the suffering humanity humanity and um, so they adopted this way of life um, they personally had no, no demand for themselves but they wanted to satisfy chitanya mahaprabhu so that's the mood of the the goswamis and a um, few verses um, i can read in this section Twenty-four. So, these um, devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, whoever was returning from Vrindavan, they would ask, uh, "How is Rupa and Sanatan doing in Vrindavan?" And these associates, they would tell them that these brothers, they actually have no fixed residence. They reside beneath trees, one night under one tree, and next night under another tree, and they beg a little food from the houses of brahmanas. They, they. giving up all kinds of material enjoyment they take some dry bread and fried chickpeas they carry only water pots and they wear torn quilts they always chant the holy name of krishna and discuss his pastimes they engage almost 24 hours daily in the service to the lord and they usually sleep only half an hour and a half and some days when they continuously chant the lord's holy name they don't even sleep at all sometimes they write transcendental literature about devotional service and sometimes they hear about shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and spend their time thinking about the lord and when the personal associates of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu would hear about the activities of rupa and sanatan goswami they would say oh what is wonderful for a person who has been granted the lord's mercy and uh, when rupa goswami he was writing his books he is saying that uh, uh, whatever i'm doing and he wrote several books it's all coming from the mercy of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and rupa goswami he wrote although i am the lowest of men and have no knowledge the inspiration to write transcendental literatures about devotional service has been mercifully bestowed upon me therefore i am offering my obeisances at the lotus feet of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu so like that um, and then um, uh, i would uh, so this uh, rupa goswami we are supposed to be following shri rupa goswami in his footsteps and we are called rupa nugas to attain the service of shrimati radha rani when bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur he was departing from this world he asked his disciple to sing the song shri rupa manjari pad shri rupa manjari pada sei mora sampada sei mora bhajan pujan sei mora bhajan pujan so the this verse um, the song by narottam das thakur is saying that the lotus feet of shri rupa manjari are my treasure my devotional service and my object of worship and they give my life meaning when shila prabhupad was in uh, vrindavan uh, we heard this past time before before coming to america um, we have this past time that was told by ridenanda baba ji maharaj how shila prabhupad was desperately praying to rupa goswami and we will um, just end this class by reading this uh, nice uh, past time how uh, shila prabhupad was empowered and blessed by rupa goswami to uh, execute this mission of krishna consciousness spread krishna consciousness in the west ridenanda baba ji maharaj is living in vrindavan for more than 80 years Baba Ji Maharaj stays near Radha Damodar Temple, and even while speaking about His divine grace, his eyes were filled with tears of love. Baba Ji Maharaj, glorifying Shila Prabhupad, said, "Never have I seen anyone do sadhana like he did. Prabhupad did many arduous things. He worked very hard there at Radha Damodar Temple. That's in Vrindavan. At that time, it was austere, undeveloped, and very muddy and dirty, with no facilities." without sadhana one can never attain krishna prem many years later when i heard that it was he who had been chosen by chaitanya mahaprabhu to spread the hari krishna maha mantra around the world i was not surprised prabhupad spread this krishna consciousness movement by the mercy of rupa goswami prabhupad used to pray to rupa goswami you please give me your mercy and then he got that mercy i knew this because i saw some things he did at the radha damodar temple Many times in the middle of the night, at midnight, 
or one or two in the morning, I would hear a voice crying from inside the courtyard near Rupa Goswami Samadhi Mandir. That voice was calling out and crying, but I did not know what it was because I was trying to take rest. But one night on the full moon, I heard the voice again. So I climbed up the roof of the house and looked down into Radha Damodar courtyard. I saw something very amazing. Shalop Prabhupada was sweeping the courtyard of Rupa Goswami Samadhi. He was bending down with a small broom and he swept the ground by the Samadhi and he was crying out, Hey Rupa, Hey Sanatan, Hey Gurudev, please give me your mercy. Without your mercy, I cannot do anything. Give me this, give me the mercy, give me the strength that I may fulfill your orders. Every night he was calling out as he was sweeping like this. The Lord has utilized such an empowered person to spread his mission. Anything like that he has to be done with heavy and strong sadhana. Krishna rewarded him because he had so much nishtha and shuddha. I've never seen such sadhana and feeling as this. So we can see that um, Srila Prabhupada, he got the mercy of Rupa Goswami. Um, Prabhupada used to say that Vaishnava is always thinking himself helpless and begging help from the previous Acharyas. And um, um, I was also remembering that um, when uh, Srila Prabhupada was young as um, Abhay, uh, his father, Srila Prabhupada's father, um, he understood the value of blessings by the sadhus. So he would invite, he and his wife, uh, Rajini Devi, would in, invite sadhus in their house to cook and cooked prasadam and serve the sadhus and with all the his hospitality and respect. And when they were satisfied uh, and they were leaving Gaur Mohan Day, Srila Prabhupada's father, he would fold his hands and fall at the feet of the sadhus and beg them that please bless my son Abhay Charan so that he becomes a pure devotee of Srimati Radharani. So he was trying to get blessings uh, uh, from the sadhus. So we can see that um, uh, we need to beg from our previous acharyas, Rupa Goswami. Uh, if you want to understand the pastimes of Srimati Radharani, we first need to bless, we need to get the blessings of um, our acharyas, especially Rupa Goswami and beg them for their mercy so that we can help Srila Prabhupada in his mission and we also get empowered. So um, that's what I wanted to share today. Um, thank you everyone for giving me the opportunity to share. Thank you very much. Very wonderful class. And very organized and nicely presented. Okay. Anybody has any comments? <clears throat> Thank you, Mataji, for the beautiful class. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Radhashmi is coming up. Which day is Radhashmi? It's next Monday, Prabhuji. Next Monday. Okay. I got one uh, Krishna Katha Mrita Bindu. It says Radha, Radhashmi special, uh, so we can read later on. Also, so <clears throat> anything, any reflections or any comments from the class? Anybody like to say anything? Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances of glory to Srila Prabhupada. My name is Hari Murthy from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, one question I have is um, in, uh, you know, being associated with uh, ISKCON and the Hare Krishnas, I find that um, there is a tendency to always rank devotees or gurus or Maharaj like A is better than B, or B is greater than C, Z is the lowest like that. Do you think that that is um, counterproductive or are we in the Hare Krishna movement, are we putting too much emphasis on ranking of various acharyas and also um, uh, uh, connecting them um, to, you know, Lord Rama appeared as, uh, you know, so and so. Uh, you know, uh, and then we also frequently say we cannot approach Lord Krishna without Lord Chaitanya. We cannot approach Lord Chaitanya without approaching Lord Nityananda. We cannot approach Lord Nityananda without approaching Guru Maharaj. 
which you know which totally makes sense to me everything comes through guru so what is your comment on that uh, by the way you know i uh, this is a fantastic class i think a most amazing class uh, i've listened to one thing very similar class before in new jersey also so it's very very beautiful class thank you so very much i uh, thank you bye thank you Uh, Prima Sindhu Prabhu, you want to answer that question? Uh, the question I'm trying to understand is saying that we are saying something is better, somebody is better than somebody else. I Can you please uh, elaborate a little bit? I'm not confused with the question. You're saying one, one Acharya is better than other Acharya like that. Yeah, like, you know, uh, like, she, you have an she was... Example, you have an example, like, because. She was saying that, you know, uh, Sri Rupa and Sanatan, and then she was comparing them to like Vallabh Bhattacharya. Um, I know there are six Goswamis, you know, and then um, just in general, you know, because I, I go down to the street I in Cleveland and I try to distribute Prabhupada's books and give prasadam. So I, I find that, you know, when I'm talking to somebody, you know, um, who's out on the street who has no idea who may or may not have heard of Krishna, you know, um, I find that, you know, the, the speaking something from uh, Bhakti Tirtha Swami's books is more helpful to me, uh, you know, in conveying the spiritual message that we are trying to tell people, you know. So uh, I'm just thinking that is it so, maybe we are putting too much emphasis on uh, it is so relishable, by the way. I mean, whatever you are reading is very, very relishable. But should we, uh, you know, inside the Hare Krishna movement, even spreading to the Hindus, you know, because in Cleveland, we don't have a temple. I go down to the Balaji temple a lot. So is it maybe we should shift our emphasis more on um, conveying this message in a, in a different way rather than, um, you know, uh, Relishing the mellows of uh, the beautiful verses that you know His Holiness Rupa Goswami has written, you know, and is it do do you think we are putting too much emphasis on comparison of uh, so many devotees, um, or you know, that that that's my question. So there are different rasa, but uh, you know, like. We read about Vatsalya Ras, Madhuri Ras. Mm -hmm. This is not like a beginner class. This is like for those who are already. We don't. Right. Yeah, we don't uh, say all these things in the Ramananda Rai and the Chaitanya. <coughs> this is just. Uh, this is can be relished more amongst devotees, but this is not like for um, newcomers. Yeah. New, first Bhagavad Gita, then. Bhagavatam, like slowly, gradually, and then you come to Chaitanya Charitramita. So, for preaching, yeah, we have to convey the message, like, and then when person is ready, then you can tell more about, you know, this, all this. Uh, although Prabhupada wanted Chaitanya Charitramita to be also distributed on the streets. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is a of course, if they read, uh, then maybe they understand, and with the guidance of the devotees, they will understand. So, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself said that the worship of the gopis is the highest. There is no better mm. worship than done. But the friends of Krishna are also satisfied serving Krishna. So, they, as we were hearing in the class, they don't want mm. to change. They don't want to change. Hanumanji is also satisfied in Dasyaras. Mm -hmm. And uh, from Krishna's point of view, Prabhupada said Krishna loves the cow also. Just mm -hmm. that he loves Srimati Radharani. He's not impartial. He's mm -hmm. not that he loves only the gopis. He doesn't love the cows or anything. Mm -hmm. But in terms of rasa, you know, the gopi rasa is the highest. The conjugal rasa is the highest mm -hmm. because it is more. It is more intimate with Krishna. Mm -hmm. But we all have our rasa. Our mm -hmm. uh, original swarup in the spiritual, mm -hmm. and we are satisfied in that. So, but ultimately, we are all servants of Krishna. Mm -hmm. Whichever rasa you are, the original swarup 
is we are servant. Now, how you give pleasure in different rasa, that is a detail. But mm -hmm. we are all servants of the Supreme Lord. So, so that is what uh, I, so we are not saying this is lower and this is highest. I mean, it is lower in terms of how much, uh, I mean, we say Vatsalya, then Madhurya, Sakya. Mm -hmm. So that is how it is described. But the devotees in that rasa are satisfied and Krishna is satisfied with playing with his friends as much as he's satisfied in dealing with the gopis. So, mm -hmm. but still the conjugal rasa is higher. So, okay. like that. yeah. Uh, that's a very good explanation, Prabhu. I, I, I think I, I can accept that fully. Thank you very much. Um, that's, and I, I think I like one point very much that uh, she mentioned. I don't know the speaker's name, but she said that Krishna is so perfect. So to, for him to express um, his feelings, he has to have somebody perfect and only somebody who's perfect can create another thing that's perfect. So he had to kind of have a, a plenary expansion of uh, Radharani. I don't know if my terminology is correct. I think we say that the plenary exp expansion of Krishna is only Balaram. So that was very nicely explained. And that totally makes sense to me. Like that, you know, um, you, a human cannot create somebody that Krishna can relish the pastimes with only him himself can create. That was very nicely said. Mm, it is said that when Krishna wants to serve himself, he expands as Balram. When Krishna okay. wants to enjoy, he expands as Radharani. Okay. <laughs> so, so, and then Radharani expands into the further the gopis. Because Radharani also wants to serve Krishna. Mm -hmm. But her desire to serve Krishna is so intense that she has to expand into so many gopis. So the manjaris and all this, they are like expansive. Mm -hmm. So Jiva can never become Radharani. We can never become Radharani. We can aspire to be like the servant. Mm -hmm. We cannot take the position of Yashoda or Radharani. Like, mm -hmm. But we can have the same mood of service if the Jiva wants to serve in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, anything Suvanda like to add? Uh, no, Prabhuji. I was also thinking as Prabhuji was saying that we did talk about Rupa Manjari being the leader of the Manjaris and other Manjaris serving. So there is that concept of one is a leader and we are um, in Nectar of Instruction, Srila Prabhupada writes, we, and the Krishna Conscious Movement is conducted under the supervision of Rupa Goswami uh, and we are called Rupa Nugas. They're not, uh, I mean, there is Sanatan Goswami, Raghunadas Goswami too, yeah, but we are working under Rupa Goswami. So there is that concept of, uh, you know, it's not higher and lower, but it's just the designations of how people are in the spiritual world. Uh, Rupa Manjari is the leader of the Manjari. So like that, there is that level. And maybe leader servant, you could servant leader, whatever yeah. So they are not like in the material world, the leader is like, you know, has a false ego and is demanding, okay, everybody should do like this. And no, they are also in the mood of service. Everybody is in the mood of service. So that is the very important thing. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yeah. Uh, may I just say one thing? So I was also remembering this past time where uh, Shima Sacharya and his disciple Ramchandra Kavi, uh, Kavira, I think Ramchandra Khan. So Shima Sacharya, he was uh, sitting in the Samadhi and what happened is he went to the spiritual world and I think it has been happened two, three days and he didn't come back. So all of the devotees were very disturbed. Then Ramchandra uh, Kaviraj, disciple of uh, Shima Sacharya, he also went into the Samadhi to see what's happening and then uh, he saw they went into the spiritual world and uh, in his Mani Manjari, I think he was Mani Manjari, Shinima Sacharya, they were searching Radha Rani's, uh, maybe the anklet or nose ring. That was, uh, you know, because of that Rasa dance they have done and Radha Rani lost it. So they were all searching that in the Kunja. So nobody was able to find all the gopis were searching, all the Manjaris were searching. And then that's the reason that uh, Shrimas Acharya was not in the external consciousness in the material world. 
but when uh, uh, ramchandra uh, kaviraj he went uh, i think ramchandra khan he went and uh, he he also immediately started searching for radharani's nose ring and he found it because everybody was searching in the pond but it was somewhere lying on the uh, lotus leaf of a flower and then he did not give it directly to radharani you know all were searching from two three days uh, look at us what we will do we'll just directly go to the person to be recognized or something so he gave it to his guru uh, shrinivas acharya and shrinivas acharya also didn't directly gave it to radharani and he gave it to uh, rupa manjiri and then rupa manjiri gave it to vishakha and then it reached to radharani so there is nothing lower and higher but uh, we take shelter of the presiders who are um, uh, maybe greater in the service like the spiritual master so we should not pose ourselves greater than them we should always serve under them so this past time also reveals that how uh, uh, this ramchandra khan did not directly in his manjiri form gave it to radharani Uh, rather you know it passed it through the chain like to gopi to manjiri and to gopi and then to radharan thank you babu ji thank you yeah <coughs> like you offer huh? food to krishna yeah to prabhu pad then uh, to prabhu pad hari go. krishna prabhu yes hari krishna uh, could i just add one little thing i think the bottom line is it is the form of respect uh rather than something else and i think there is a one past time in which i think it happened somewhere in europe while shri prabhupad was in on this planet and he was on the vyasasan and somebody who was i think phd or double phd or whatever he was little arrogant and he was saying that the rest are sitting on the floor and you are sitting on the high chair what does this mean Shila Prabhupada very humbly said that that means I am the servant of all of you, uh, and I would like to serve you as well. Uh, so the bottom line is actually this is a chain of command which is present everywhere, or it's called also in science or physics packing order. There is a density difference. If you go to ocean, ocean doesn't have a very deep down thing right at the shore front. Go to river, same way. Uh, if you if you boil the water you will find the the you know the where the heat is you will find the hot spot there not in the top uh, but it will it will travel towards top so these things are there it is not to derail somebody's thought process it is just the way it is everywhere if you go in a family there is always a chain of command if you go to congregation there is always chain of command it is a system to guide the situation rather than getting offended so that's the bottom line and it's a form of respect as mata ji very nicely said uh it's a form of love and respect at the same time so that's what it is that is the real heart to understand that in that manner uh, i hope i made a point thank you so spiritual master also thinks that he is the servant of his disciples and he has the service of training his disciples to become krishna conscious and so he gives proper so he, that is also the mood of the spiritual master as you were saying that i am sarva so he is not thinking that i am like you know superior to everybody else and of course he is superior uh, the disciples thinks like that that spiritual master is superior but the spiritual master on his side he thinks as yes, it is my duty to train and uh, the disciples in service to krishna so um so that is also the mood that as you are saying that prabhupad said i am the servant so although he's sitting in a high high seat but the mood is that i am servant so i'm training so Okay, so that is also something we can think. Okay, anything else you'd like to say?
Any other comment? Anybody has? So we see Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, they are very humble. Now I was thinking humble means you can only be humble when there is no desire for personal sense gratification. Um, then there is humility. Otherwise we are trying to compete with Krishna mm -hmm. in being the enjoyer. So. <clears throat> Yeah, good? and I guess uh, the love is not imposed. That's what the Lord has given us all of us a freedom, right? So that's the bottom line. It's not imposed. It it happens naturally, as Mataji narrated wonderful Leela. Uh, so and Prabhu, that question is very nice. I respect your question. It's a, it's a very good concern, and it as Prem Shindu Prabhu also said very nicely that this is a deep situation uh, this is not a introduction to Hare Krishna so uh, so yeah uh, but yeah that's that question and concern is very very important as you rightly pointed out thank you recently Jaydeveta Maharaj was saying that this verse is that Nikunja Yona Rati Keli Siddha Yayali Bhi Yukti Rapekshani <clears throat> Tatra Tridaksha Dati Vallabhasya Vande Guru Shri. So he was saying, I was here, I was in D land and uh, he's saying that the spiritual master is very expert in making the gopis, uh, the arrangement for the meeting of Radha and Krishna, assisting the gopis like that. But he said only if the spiritual master is in the mood of the, is, is a gopi in the, or manjari in the spiritual world. A uh, spiritual master may be a sakha in the spiritual world. So then, of course, in our line, as we were hearing, Kamala Manjari, Nayana Manjari, Rati Manjari, Rupa Manjari, Lavanga Manjari, all those Manjaris, all the <laughs> Acharyas are Manjari. Uh, Prabhupada's Swarup is not revealed, what he is. Some people say he is a cowherd boy. But <clears throat> anyhow, these are all esoteric subject matters. So, so he said only if the spiritual master is in the mood is a is a gopi or a manjari then if he's a sakha then he's in different category that's what jayadveda Prabhupada told jayadveda maharaj that uh, yeah thank you very nice explanation thank you Hare krishna thank you okay so if there is nothing else then we are going to Prabhupada also as i was remembering he said uh, something you mentioned about eating, how they were sleeping less. And Brobad also said, I want my eating, sleeping, mating, defending to become nil. Ultimately, I want to come to that point. Of course, no mating, he's a sannyasi. Uh, uh, but he said, I want my eating and sleeping also to become like, like, the, <laughs> like the Goswami. Is the, so he said, I want to make it zero. Isn't it? Somewhere he said like that. I want my eating, sleeping to become zero. Of course, we we cannot. Okay, here, let me read this. Shla Prabhupada Lila. We can't make it. Of course, Prabhupada was saying like that. He used to sleep maybe two, three hours, but that also he didn't like. So when Prabhupada came, they rented him a small room. And I got the opportunity to spend, maybe it was five days with Prabhupada, Hansa Dutta. It was just the room and then it had a little side alcove where the, there was a sink. And a, okay, So I slept under that sink and in that area. The first night I was so nervous, I could not sleep. About one in the morning, <clears throat> I heard Prabhupada rustling and getting up. And he didn't turn on the light or anything and he started chanting on his beads. So I wondered, what should I do? Should I get up or pretend I'm sleeping? So Prabhupada, and they were, I think, sleeping in the same area. And Prabhupada got up and he started chanting. I didn't know what I should do. And he was sleeping so, and he saw Prabhupada. So I didn't do anything. I pretended I was sleeping. But the next day, the same thing happened. <coughs> so Prabhupada woke up at around, what time? It says here. Uh, <coughs> One in the morning. 
I pretended I was sleeping, but the next day the same thing happened. I was so nervous, I couldn't sleep again. So when Prabhupada got up and started chanting, then I also made myself known. So Prabhupada, he turned on the light and said, oh, you are up? I said, well, Prabhupada, I'm so nervous, I haven't been able to sleep. And he said, oh, that's good, very good. <laughs> he said, I think sleeping is a waste of time. Of course, if I don't sleep, I cannot <clears throat> function. But Prabhupada is saying to him, he said, I think sleeping is a waste of time. He said, I don't like to sleep. And he said, I don't like my disciples to sleep. <laughs> so Prabhupada is saying, I don't like my disciples to sleep. Then he said, practically speaking, our aim is to make eating zero, sleeping zero, sex zero, and defense zero. We don't say that, but that is the aim. So that is, <laughs> that is Prabhupada. So Prabhupada was also following he was like the Goswamis, you know, uh, completely absorbed. Gopi Bhava Rasamrita Ti Lahari. So, <clears throat> Kallol Magna Mahu. So, like that, uh, Prabhupada was also. He said sometimes, I want to be able to make all this zero. Of course, we can't do it at our level. But to minimize means as much as is necessary, not uh, oversleep as much as needed to rejuvenate ourselves and uh, become active again to serve Krishna. So, okay. So, anything else? <coughs> okay. So, we'll stop here. Thank you very much. I wanted to read uh, this. Uh, we'll read this in the evening. This is uh, Radharani. They sent something, so we'll see what from Gopal Jiu Publications. We'll read that in the evening. Hare Krishna. Sorry, thirty-five. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.